Alrighty, folks. <clears throat> Welcome to a very impromptu stream. <laughs> um, I need to. Oh, there it is. Um, I hadn't planned on streaming this week, to be honest. I usually stream every two weeks, more or less. Um, but before we get going, just want to check if the audio is all okay. Last week there was a little bit of an issue with the audio. Um, so if you hear an echo or if the audio is not clear, I'm just turning my desktop light up a little bit. Here we go. Uh, if the audio is not clear, let me know um, and we will we will get that sorted out. All right, I will at least. <laughs> um, so as I was saying, I don't normally stream uh, every week, but last week after doing the Thank you, John. Audio good. Awesome. Thank you. Last week after doing the um, Visual Code Studio implementation of WordPress Playground, the folks over at WordPress.com um, launched Studio. Uh, and if you haven't been following the news around this, this is a new um, way to develop WordPress locally. <clears throat> um, it is free. It is open source. It is honestly one of the fastest and simplest ways to spin up a site locally. Um, it has a core feature set that it has released with. Um, and then hopefully as the team gets feedback, they will be adding new and additional features. Um, a few disclaimers before we get started. So Studio is developed by the folks at WordPress.com. Uh, WordPress.com is the uh, hosting platform of Automatic. Automatic is the company that I work for. I am sponsored by Automatic to work with the training team. Um, but I have not been coerced or requested or advised to run this live stream. I am doing this purely because I want to do it. Um, when I learned that the WordPress.com team were building this, I was very keen uh, to test it out. And so I was able to get hold of a pre-release version during development and test it out. And I'm very excited by it, I'll be honest. Uh, and I'll share why in a little bit, why, why it excites me. Um, but nobody nobody asked me to do this. My company hasn't requested that I do this. Uh, I'm doing it because I want to, because this is a cool tool to, to check out. Um, it is a competitor to things like, you've probably heard them, uh, local WP, uh, <clears throat> let's hop on over there and Dev Kinster and the like um, in that it is specifically a WordPress local development tool um, <clears throat> you can quickly spin up a WordPress site develop a theme develop a plugin uh, build out a demo site um, and then once you've done that then you can deploy it to your production environment in whichever way you prefer um, Dev Kinster and Local tend to be tied to their hosting company. So Local is owned by WP Engine. Uh, Dev Kinster is owned by Kinster. And so they have built-in ways to push to their hosting environments. Um, <clears throat> Studio doesn't have a specifically uh, uh, focused or core way to push to WordPress.com hosting. It has got some WordPress.com features, which I will share with you uh, during this live stream, but you don't need to use these features. You don't need to have a WordPress.com account to use Studio. Um, so you can build and host any WordPress.org sites you want, host it on your own environment with some caveats, which I'll we'll share in a second. Um, but if you don't like Studio, there are other options, local, devkinster, Zamp, WAMP, MAMP, all those other options, all those MP options. Um, it's 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 a it's a competitor or at least a a different way of doing things uh, to all those options. So <clears throat> before we dive in, um, just a couple of things to mention. It is currently only available on Mac. Um, there is a Windows version coming soon, um, and you can request early access from this blog post uh, if you click here. Um, you can also, if you're on a Linux environment, if you're on Ubuntu or one of those Linux uh, distros, I'm scrolling down into the comments, there is a way to build it for, <coughs> excuse me, for Linux as well, uh, which is documented here in the comments. Um, and the team is also working on a Linux distribution of this app. The great thing about uh, building for Mac first is Linux and Mac are very similar. So it's easier to take a Mac app and, and create it for Linux. 
Uh, Windows obviously has a few different uh, tweaks and things, um, but they are working on a Windows a Windows version which will be coming soon. So if you're not using Windows, sorry, if you are using Windows uh, and you're interested in trying this out for yourself, please request access from the homepage. If you're on Linux, you can check out the instructions in the comments. Um, I don't have my, I've got an Ubuntu machine sitting behind me. I don't have it, well, Ubuntu and Windows are sitting behind me. I don't have it running currently, so I'm not going to go through that process, but it is possible. Um, one of the first things I want to mention, and this is not, I'm not trying to throw shade at any of the other options, um, but one of the things that I've never enjoyed about Local WP or DevKinster is when you choose your platform, you need to give them your first name, last name, and email. Um, DevKinster as well, you need to go first name, last name, email, or name and email. There are ways around this. You can just close it and then it'll take you back to the home page. Um, if you can, I think you can just click download here. No, you've got to fill in the fields. But if you're clever, there are ways to download it. I've actually downloaded, I think it was DevKinster before, without giving them my email address. Um, I think the link was hidden by the modal and then I could move the modal out the way. Personally, that's that's just a personal thing. I don't like the fact that I have to give them my information to access their free tool. Uh, they're basically, they're building a subscriber email list and then selling me products that way. Um, I just want to be able to get hold of it. So if there was a way to you know, access the GitHub or something without having to fill in this information, I would prefer that. I think there is a way, you just need to know where to find it, whatever the case may be. Um, with Studio, that is not the case. So literally I can click here, uh, I can download Studio, there it is, download for Mac, I can select Apple or Intel, I can click on it, uh, and it goes ahead and it gives me the option to download the file. So that's one of the things I do like about it, I don't have to give them my email address, my username, uh, sorry, my name and my email. Uh, so I really do appreciate that personally from a personal point of view. I do already have Studio installed on my on my Mac, so I'm going to run it very quickly. Um, I do quite like the icon, uh, the sort of W with a little almost like targety thing around it. That's very cool. I do like that. Um, and immediately when you run Studio, you go straight into building your first first site. Um, that's the second thing I like, like about Studio. It's a very streamlined, very quick process. Um, so I'm just going to create a new site and call it, uh, let's call it Livestream. Um, <clears throat> it automatically sets a default path. You can see it's creating its uh, files in a folder called Studio in my home folder. Um, that for me is perfect. I don't have to change anything. I'm happy for it to live there. Uh, I like the fact that I know where it's living so I can get there if I need to very quickly. Um, I can change this if I want to so I can move it around. I created a little Durbanville site. I live in the suburb of Durbanville. So that was the first test site that I created. Um, but that's that's it. That's all the setup that I have that I need to, to spin up a new site. I hit continue. Um, and literally in less time than it takes me to grab my coffee, and have a sip, the site is live. I didn't even get my coffee and have a sip yet. The site is ready to go. Um, and that is the third, my third favorite thing about Studio. It is blazingly fast to get from zero to a new site running um, is, is seconds, literally is 10 seconds. I had to take a break to have coffee and the site was already ready. Okay, so now that the site is up and running, we have this lovely little dashboard. Um, and it gives me some options right out the bat. I can dive straight into the WP admin or I can open up the site straight away. Um, I can see that the site is running. I can stop the site if I don't want the site to be using up uh, memory. I can stop it if I'm not working on it. Um, I see which theme is active. So whatever the default WordPress theme is the time will obviously be the active theme. What I also like is I can dive straight into WordPress related functionality. So if I want to start building out my site, I can dive into the site editor. I can dive straight into the styles. I can dive straight into patterns. I can go straight to the navigation. I can go straight into templates and I can go straight into pages. So those things I really like. Uh, I'm sure there are some additional things that folks might want, but I like the fact that that exists as an option. What I can also do is I can immediately, and I'm going to start clicking now, I can immediately open it up in uh, my application for viewing files. So if I want to see where the files are and what, and what they look like, I can go straight into there um, and you'll see it is just a standard WordPress install. Um, let me just do that. So WP admin directory, WP content, WP includes and all the standard default WordPressy things, they exist. So it's nothing out of the ordinary, no weird configurations, just the default WordPress core install. Um, if I'm a VS Code user, I can also jump straight into VS Code from Studio. Um, it will open up VS Code. Okay, it's asking me, do I want this to allow it to happen? Yes, it's fine. We can go ahead. 
I can go straight into VS Code with the uh, live stream site loaded in VS Code, and now I can just start coding. Uh, so that to me is really, really cool. Um, if you've been following my live streams for a while, you know I prefer to use PHP Storm. There is an open issue for PHP Storm support. I'll get into those in a second. Um, but personally, I would like something like that, but I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, the other option that I really, really like, the, the sort of developer-focused option, is I can immediately open my terminal um, to the path for my live stream site. Uh, so if I want to run terminal commands, I'm there, I'm ready to rock and roll. I can just quickly go into my WP content, for example, WP content plugins, and I'm there and I can do things, whatever I might want to do. Um, so that's another very, very cool, sorry, I was busy installing things earlier, very, very cool feature of Studio. Uh, and the fact that they've thought about adding these things and the fact that it gives us scope for adding additional things is, in my opinion, a very, very cool thing. I'm going to be saying very, very cool a lot today, so please bear with me. I'll try and change it up a bit. Um, so that's what you see on the dashboard as you as you first launch your site. WP Admin takes you straight to WP Admin. Um, it uses a default username and password, which is just admin and password. You can obviously update that if you want to. Personally, I don't mind. I like, I like keeping it simple. Um, we can also open the site straight away. So there's the front end of the site, um, and that's all great. Uh, and then we've got uh, some additional tabs, which we will dive into. One thing you will notice um, is at the top here, it is using the SQL Lite database. <coughs> so SQL Lite is a plugin that was developed uh, some time ago. I'm not sure when exactly. Let's go and have a look quickly. Um, so it's this SQL Lite database in integration. Um, it is a WordPress team uh, plugin. Um, and essentially, it allows you to run WordPress core against an SQLite plugin. Um, I just want to have a look at the development quickly here. Uh, I want to see when version one was released. <clears throat> oh, there are no tags. Oh, dear. Uh, let's check the change log. Um, it'll be in the readme somewhere. So this is something, uh, oh, it's not there. <laughs> um, here we go, let's see if we can find. So this was something that Ari actually created. Uh, if you don't know Ari, he is a core developer. He works at Emilia Capital at the moment. Um, and this is something, I'm actually gonna find the blog post. So if we go to make WordPress uh, core and we search for, um, hi. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce your nickname, but hi, whoever joined us there in the chat. Um, if we go to SQL Lite, uh, there were some posts that Ari was posting about this plugin a while back. I'm just going to try and find it quickly. <clears throat> uh, I'm not going to find it now, am I? I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, I just wanted to kind of try and get a feel for when this conversation started. Um, no, I'm not going to find it, but it was a while ago. Uh, maybe Google will help us. Uh, WordPress SQLite support. Let's see what Google tells us. Oh, here we go. Um, so in the 19th of April, 2023, there was a status update. Um, the initial implementation was included in Performance Lab and then released as a standalone plugin. Um, it was back in 2022 that uh, RE first suggested that WordPress supports SQLite. Um, so it's something that's been around for a while. Um, and one of the reasons was sort of smaller sites, simpler sites. They don't need to have MySQL installed. It increases um, load on the server, decreases performance. So the idea was to get WordPress to support uh, SQLite. And you can do that through this SQLite plugin. Um, so play, um, so uh, Studio, which is using Playground under the hood, uses the same SQLite integration. So that's just something to note. We'll dive into how that all works in a second, but it's something good to be aware of. Um, okay, let's take a breath because I actually have some goals for today that I wrote down. Um, as you can tell, I'm very excited and I want to dive into things, but I kind of want to share my goals for today because I actually do have a list. Um, so my goals for today are really to dive into very developer-focused topics. So I want to have a look at theme development. I want to look at how that works in Studio. I want to see if create block theme works. Um, so create block theme will allow us to create a new block theme and maybe do some coding on it and see how that all works and export files and all of that. I want to see if that works. 
Then I want to dive into plugin development. I want to see if I can get that working. It should work, and I'll explain why in a second, but we'll see how it works. Then I want to look at debugging. Um, I want to see what happens if I enable the default WP debug constants. I want to chat briefly about whether or not Xdebug is supported on Studio. And then I want to look into something called Ray, which you may or may not have heard of, but it's an interesting little debugging tool. Then I want to have a look at whether we can get WPCLI commands to run. They should run. We'll talk about why they should in a second and see if that works. I want to dive into database management, and that's why I was talking about the SQLite plugin, because uh, we're going to need to have a way to access that database. And then I want to kind of chat about pushing to production and, and sort of the options available to you there, um, see which work, which don't work. And last but not least, I want to see if multi-site is supported. I have no idea if it will work. Uh, we're going to just try it and see. But I want to try and turn a site into a multi-site um, and see what happens. So those are kind of the high-level goals. Um, if you have anything that you would like me to try today, uh, if you think about it, let me know in the chat. Um, I'm happy to experiment. I can't guarantee it's all going to work. Um, but if there's anything you want, anything developer focused that you want us to try today, share it with me in the chat. I'll, I'll try and keep an eye on the chat and I'll add them here to the slide uh, and we'll see if we have time to get to them. All right. Uh, let me close down a bunch of links. So I'll close down Kinsta. I'll close down that. We can leave the dashboard open. That's fine. We can leave the SQL light. No, we don't need that anymore. We can close the README. We can close that down. Um, what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to move some of these links over here. They'll become important in a second. I'm going to leave the Studio one open. There's my dashboard. Uh, live stream. Okay, that one I don't need. I'm going to move that one over here. I'll talk about that in a sec. <coughs> but here is my site. So the first thing that you might notice about this site is that it's running on a domain localhost colon 8881. So that's obviously a port number on localhost. Um, it's actually, uh, if you go into the settings tab of your, of your site in Studio, you will see that local domain there. So you can copy it out of there. You can edit your site name if you need to. Uh, you, can edit, you can open up your local path. You'll see the WordPress version is the latest version. Here's the admin and password. So you can change the password, or sorry, copy the password. I don't think you can change it, but you can copy it. Um, and then there's the admin URL. Personally, and this is the one thing I don't like about Studio, but personally, I would like to be able to have a local domain, maybe something like livestream.test um, configured to this. I do understand, though, that that requires the local machine to be able to support custom domain names and pointing them to the Studio instance and all that. I do understand that. So for me personally, that is my one almost, I want to say, bugbear about Studio, that it doesn't support that. It's not a huge train smash, to be honest, um, but I would like to have a slightly nicer, cleaner uh, top-level domain for my local test sites. That's just me personally. Um, so that's the one thing that I, that I thought is, is uh, sort of interesting. Then let's uh, go into theme development. So what I want to do is I want to install, I've got 2024 and 2023 installed. I want to install um, a plugin. And the plugin is called Create Block Theme. So I'm just going to go through the normal um, add plugins process, the way we can search for plugins in the plugin repository. And I'm going to search for uh, Create Block Theme. <coughs> and that should give me Create Block Theme. There it is. So let's install that. Um, and what Create Block Theme does, if you haven't seen it, it basically allows you some additional functionality over and above uh, the block editor for theme development. Um, so I've activated it now. If I go into Appearance, there is now a Create Block Theme page, which allows me to do various things. Um, it's actually been deprecated and will be removed in the next release. So I'm not going to use this page today. Uh, I'm rather going to use the, the Create Block Theme menu in the editor. So if I go into my editor, this is my site editor. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's go to templates um, and let's just go and, and access the index template. Uh, no, that's not what I want to do. I want to edit the index template, sorry. So there and then edit. Um, so now I'm editing my site and what I'm going to do, actually let's not, Let's not do the index template. Let's do the single post template. Um, so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a change to my single post template. I'm developing a new theme. I want to make a change to the template. I'm going to add inside of the content area. There are the tags. Um, then there are the comments. So what I'm going to do 
I'm going to change things around a little. I'm going to move the featured image after the title, after the title and post meta. So let's do that first. So I'm going to move the featured image down. There we go. So title first, then the post name, then the featured image. Uh, and then I want to move the tags group. I want to move it above the content. Uh, don't ask me why, I'm just being weird today. <laughs> so I'm going to insert before or add before, and I'm going to add a group. Um, and I'm going to just create a standard group, and then I'm going to take the tags, and I'm going to move that into that group. Uh, where is it now? There we go. I want it inside the group there. Boom. Okay. So there we go. So our title happens first, then our dates, uh, post meta, for example, then our featured image, then the tags, and then the content, uh, then the comments below that. I'm also going to remove the spacer. Um, so basically, I'm just customizing my post template. I think what I'm also going to do is I'm going to uh, widen the template. So let's go to the, the main group. It's not styles, hang on. Settings, there we go. Uh, let's say inner blocks don't use content width. And let's make these blocks, let's see what 960, 960 was, what it was already. So let's make it, oh, it's content 960, what am I doing? Um, go back here, group. So I'm gonna make this, uh, let's say 1080 wide just for the sake of being different. <laughs> so I'm just making it 1080 pixels wide. Um, and yeah, that's a nice set of, of changes. So I'm going to save this change. This will save it to the database um, for the single posts. And then here is the create block theme settings. I'm now going to uh, create theme. So I want to clone this theme with a new name and preserve the user changes. Uh, so let's do that. And what did we call this? We called this, I'm trying to remember what the site was called. It's called Livestream. So we'll call this the Livestream theme. <laughs> um, I don't really, I'm not too worried about the theme metadata, so I'm gonna leave that as is. And I'm now going to create this theme. Okay, theme successfully cloned. The editor will now reload, so let's reload the editor. And theoretically now we should have, if we open up Visual Studio Code, uh, sorry, not that one, uh, this one from over here. If we open this in, now notice it's updated live stream in my studio. That's very, very cool. So that syncs back to the app. Um, it's picked up that live stream has been cloned and activated. So that is currently the default theme. Um, and if I open this in VS Code, I should see that there is a new theme folder. Uh, there it is, live stream. Uh, and it will then have my customized post single post template, which is there. Um, and with all the things we've changed around, there's the 1080 pixels. So that just works. Out of the box, it all works perfectly. Uh, the Studio app updates with the new theme, which is very, very cool. Um, so I'm quite happy that that works like it does. Um, so that's that to me is very, very cool. Um, I will note, uh, it's interesting, and this is unrelated to Studio, um, it's interesting to me that the create block theme folks are going to deprecate this page because I like to be able to create a blank theme first um, and then make the changes to it. So I actually want to chat to the folks behind this and ask them if they're definitely going to gonna, um, deprecate this whole page or whether there's some benefit in keeping some of these around. Because when I develop a new theme, I prefer to start with a brand new blank theme and then start making changes. That's just a personal preference. Um, so that's a little tangent, not nothing related to Studio, but that works and works as it should. So I'm very, very, I'm very chuffed and very happy with that. Um, all right, let us move on to my other things, block plugin development. I want to see if I can use create block, um, which is a tool that allows you to create a block from the command line. Um, let's just see here, it's a great, great block tool. So this is the tool. Um, I have this installed on my local environment. So when I say I have this installed, what I mean is I have Node.js and I have NPM 
installed on my local. So if I run node minus V, I get a version currently running version 20. If I run NPM minus V, I have the version. So I have that installed on my local machine system wide. I can run Node.js and NPM commands from wherever I want to. Um, if you want to know how to do that, I can share a little video with you. Um, let me just update this. Uh, there we go. Installing an OJS and NPM for local WordPress development. This is a tutorial that I created some time ago, which includes all these steps. This is my personal preference for setting up these things on Mac, on Windows, and on Linux. So if you want to get that installed because you want to do plugin development or WordPress core development, you can use this process to do that. But essentially, you get to, we get down the bottom here, you've got NVM installed, uh, and then you install Node, and then you can check that it's running. So with that, I should now theoretically be able to run npx WordPress create block uh, to do list from my command line inside of inside of my LearnPress, and then be able to create a block. It all should just work out of the box. So let's open the terminal, uh, and there we are. Let's go into the WP Content Plugins directory. Uh, there we are in the Plugins directory. There should be four plugins, uh, and let's run and let's create a new block. So we'll call it to do list. Uh, maybe not. Let's call it uh, copyright date. Uh, copyright block. Uh, so we'll run that. <clears throat> and it's asking me, do I want to use these things? Yes, I want to go ahead and use these things. So now it's going to download all the new things. Um, and this takes this takes some time, uh, but hopefully it doesn't take too long. <laughs> um, I always forget about create block having an updated version before live streams. And I forget to make sure I'm up to date so that this doesn't take forever. Um, but it seems to be doing its thing, so all good. If you're wondering why I'm creating a copyright date block, it's because in the uh, WordPress developer resources, uh, there is a tutorial titled Build Your First Block. Um, and the tutorial that they create is to build a copyright date block. Um, so we're going to, I don't think I'm going to build the whole um, block now. Uh, I might just do some of the initial code. I might just grab some of the code um, and just make some changes and just see how it works. Uh, maybe I'll grab the, I don't know, maybe I'll grab the, the custom, no, I don't want the custom, I don't need the custom icon. Uh, let's just grab the edit.js code and we'll just use this. We'll just grab this one. Um, and, and get it to return something and just see it working. So I'll just use that code. All right, let's see if this is installed. Nope, WordPress scripts are still installing. Node.js is doing its thing. Um, while we're doing that, we can obviously check out those files in the plugins directory. So there's plugins, there's create block theme, there's all the files being created. Um, my, no, sorry, create block theme. That's the one I want. I want copyright date block, there it is. My node modules directory is probably just getting bigger and bigger and bigger as it installs all the things. Okay, here we go. It's done. It's bootstrapped. Good to go. Um, so I'm not going to make any massive changes to this block. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up the edit component and I'm going to update this with the edit from the code just so we can see it working. So there we go. So current year, new date, all good. Use block props is already there. Current year is there. Excellent. We don't need anything else for that. I don't think. No, that code should work. Um, and then because I have these things installed, I can just run npm run build um, or npm start either way. So let's run npm run build. Uh, oh, I'm not inside. Pff, I'm not inside the correct directory. Let's do that. And then let's run npm run build again. Um, <clears throat> All right. So that's generated its code. So that all should be good. So now I should have that installed and ready to activate in my WordPress install. So let's hop back here and have a look. Um, there it is, copyright date block. There's a new version available. <laughs> um, I actually didn't, I, I, there's obviously a copyright date block in the WordPress plugin directory. Um, uh, there it is. It looks like it's a Marcus, um, a Marcus plugin. Probably, probably one that he created for the original documentation. <laughs> uh, so I'm not gonna update this right now, um, but let's activate this one. Um, and there it is. And then let's go into a post and let's create a new post. Um, actually, no, no, no. Let's let's do even something even better. Let's go into our our editor and let's edit our theme. And let's go into the not the 
there is a templates no it's inside of patterns the header and footer are inside the patterns let's go into the footer pattern the template part footer there we go and let's add the copyright date block in here why not um, so let's edit this and then let's see what we can do here so this is a group um, so I'm going to add another block to this group and I'm going to look for copyright date there it is okay it's got the blue background and all of that so it is what it is um, I want to make the group stack there we go I want uh, let's say uh, let's say justify center that's fine um, I don't think the block supports a background yet so I can't change the background but at least I've got the that there so there we go so there's the block being used inside of my footer um, and now what I want to do is using create block theme I want to save these changes to my theme uh, so I'm going to hit the save changes to theme option um, looks like there might be some all right these are obviously just defaulted localized text images no I don't need any of that I don't need style changes I don't need fonts because I didn't make any font or style changes um, so let's save those changes this should now write that to my footer template parts in my theme in the code um, so ooh, it doesn't look like it has done that uh, I'm not sure let's have a look and see whether it has saved it in the theme I wonder if it's because ah wait I think it's because I haven't saved it to the database so let's do that first so let's go and add in the group let's add the copyright date um, let's make them see what happens stack no, let's do that one and let's justify center I think it was there we go then let's save it yes then let's export the save changes to theme uh, let's just save those changes bomb let's see if that takes uh, Yes, that has worked. Excellent. So that's because I didn't save it to the database first. And then if we go into our Visual Studio Code and we have a look at the <laughs> live stream theme, if we look inside the patterns, no, the parts, template parts, the footer part, we should now see at the bottom there somewhere, we should see our block being used. Um, so there it is, copyright date block, hello from the saved content. That's happening because I haven't implemented the copyright date in the save. So let's fix that. Um, I should have done that first but anyway let's do it now quickly so let's grab all of this actually let's grab it from the from the tutorial um, oh they're using a render so let's let's not do it that way let's do it let's just do it in the code here so let's go into save um, so it'll be use block props save save there we go okay that should be good let's build that quickly um, yeah that's all worked so now we're gonna have to make some changes so let's go back into our footer let us remove this block now this wouldn't be a problem if I had created it as a as a dynamic block um, so this is my own daftness <laughs> but let's delete it and then let's add it again um, copyright date block there it is I just want to check the code and make sure that it's saved it correctly as well oh it looks like it hasn't updated oh I think I need to I think I need to hit refresh here uh, so let's reload this <coughs> thought so um, so let's go think I've just broken I just think I just managed to break my site <laughs> um, so let's go back let us uh, go back into the footer and take out the copyright date block um, there we go and then let's reload the editor let's go back into the patterns let's go back into the footer there we go let's edit that exit the code editor and now we can pop it back in so there's the row there's the date block uh, let's
let's save this. Now I want to see. No, oh, I'm getting an error. I've clearly done something wrong. Uh, probably in my block code. Oh, wait, let me just see something here quickly. Ah, that's what I've done wrong. Um, so it's use block prop save like that. It's been a while since I've done this, folks, so bear with me. Um, how do you... Uh, I can't do that. Okay, never mind. Let us grab this. Let's try this again. <laughs> uh, Use block prop save. There we go. And then let's kill all of that. Okay. Let's try this again, folks. Uh, no, go back one. I think I've broken it again. This is what happens when you don't prepare things and you just randomly go in. <laughs> all right, so let's run the build. That should now be good. Let's go back into the editor. Okay, so we had a question. I've got a question in the chat about Playground. When I use WP now, I can't insert any file on my project. Ah, interesting. Um, are you are you on Windows? Um, are you trying to use WP now on Windows or are you on a Mac or Linux? If you can answer that, yes, you are on Windows. Okay. Um, so there is a known issue with, I think it's Playground. Um, let me just see here. Um, give me one second here. I just want to check something. Um, Yes. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to open up the playground repository here. So WordPress playground is what powers WP now and studio and all those things. Um, there is, as far as I know, a windows related issue. Um, related to the host file system or something like that. I think it's this one. Um, so there are some there are some some Windows specific issues with accessing files. Um, I can't remember exactly where I saw it, um, but it is a known issue with Playground. Um, it is something that I know the Playground developers are working on, uh, but unfortunately, that is an, a currently a known issue with anything that Playground uses on a Windows environment. Trying to trying to add, I think it's media files or upload plugin files, upload theme files, doesn't quite work yet. Um, so what I would recommend uh, if you want to sort of log that is to go to the playground, uh, let's just go, yeah, do this learn playground, um, go to the WordPress playground GitHub repository um, and, and log the issue there and, and see if you can help them debug and, and, and test the issue. Um, because as far as I know, that is a, that is a known concern. Um, and it would be great if we can get that fixed for Windows users. So do check that out. Unfortunately, I don't have an answer for you on that one. It is, it is currently a known issue. And I'm sorry that I don't have a, a better answer for you. Um, okay. Let me get back to my, my footer pattern here. Um, let me get this working. Let me attempt block recovery. Uh, let's exit the code editor. Let's attempt block recovery. Okay. That's working. Let's make sure the the um, the code is correct. Uh, scroll all the way down. Yeah, that looks much better. Copyright block, copyright 2024. That looks so much better. Excellent. So let's go back to the visual editor. So now if I save this um, and then write this to my theme, let's just save all those changes. Um, that should work. So let's see here. Thank you, uh, Ask Hamano as well for sharing the GitHub uh, issue. Ah, oh, you found it there. Oh, that's the actual issue. Ah, there we go. Um, 
VS Code, can't upload media on Windows. There we go. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so it is a known issue. And do do add your, your thoughts there uh, and your experiences. I know that uh, Adam said something about getting this fixed and how to fix this. Um, but yeah, it is there. Oh, it's <laughs> Hamino, is that you? <laughs> you obviously knew it as well. Um, so cool. Thank you for sharing that link with us. Um, great. Uh, okay, where was I? I was, okay, so I've exported this. Let's see in my theme. Yes, there's the copyright date block. So that all works brilliantly. Uh, cool, so I can develop themes, I can develop plugins, I can develop custom plugins for my themes. Um, it all just works. And that is because I have those pieces of software installed on my local environment. So because I have um, the, the access to the files with Studio sitting on, on my hard drive, I install those things, I install Node.js, NVM, and it just works. Um, so that to me is another cool thing I like about uh, Studio. It is essentially just um, replicating the core WordPress file experience on my local hard drive and I can do everything in that environment that I want to be able to do. What that also means is that I can do, and I'm gonna kind of jump ahead here, I'm gonna pull this one up um, and I'm gonna jump it ahead. We'll get, we'll get into debugging in a second. Uh, but that also means that I can do WPCLI commands on the site on my local machine. Uh, now, if you don't know what WPCLI is, <laughs> and I, I've just realized I'm so excited about Studio. That means I'm talking very, very fast. So if you need me to slow down, let me know. I do get excited. I do talk fast on these live streams. So I apologize. Um, it's one of the things that I have to force myself to do when I'm running an online workshop, a proper formalized online workshop. But to install WPCLI on your local machine, you can. there are some, some uh, instructions that you can run. Um, there are alternative methods that you can run it. Uh, it talks about WordPress versions. You can use these commands. You can run it. Um, and essentially, I have followed all of these steps and I can run uh, WP. Uh, let's just actually clear out of here and go back to my home directory. I can just run WP dash dash info and it's installed system wide on my machine. So what that means is I can, if I just open up my terminal to the site that I'm working on, I can do things like run WP plugin list, for example, and it shows me a list of all my plugins. Um, and if I wanted to, I can go WP uh, plugin install, um, and I'm going to have to think of a plugin now. Uh, I think uh, WordPress SEO is one. I think I think that's Yoast. Uh, yes, it's Yoast. There we go. So I can just run that from the command line. Um, I can do cool things like WP search replace, um, which allows me to prepare my database. Um, and let's say, uh, where is, let's say, let's do this. Let's say search replace live stream with, uh, let's call it live stream. No, no, what is it called currently? It's currently called live stream, the site name. Let's just do a quick check. Yeah. It's called underscore live stream, live stream. Let's call it demo live stream. That'll be the site name. And let's do a dry run because I don't actually want to do the replacements. But I can run those kind of commands on my database um, and it'll it'll be able to do it for me. So any WPCLI commands that I can run on a server, I can run in my local environment. As long as I have it installed on my operating system from my terminal of my operating system, I can, I can change the directory. I can run my WPCLI commands. I can do things like WP user add, I think it is. Um, uh, WP help user, WP user, what is it called? Create, ah, WP user create. So I can do things like that. If I want to create another user, uh, I can say WP user create, and let's call him live stream. Uh, and let's give him a, I think it needs an email. Yeah, it needs user login, user email. Uh, so let's say WP user create live stream and let's say live let's say live at livestream.test for example. Um, and that'll create a user for me. And now I can use that user and I can log in and I can do things. Um, I can even uh, if I wanted to from the command line, I could say WP create sorry, WP user create um, let's call it my name. Um, and then say role equals administrator, I think it is, administrator, uh, boom. No, that was wrong. Oh, user email I need, sorry. 
So let's say create jpassenger, let's say create uh, jpassenger at email.com. That's not my actual email address. Um, but I can create a new administrator user. Um, and then I could go ahead and delete my current admin user. Um, so I could say wp user delete. I think I just need to say admin. Um, this is probably going to break studio and I'm okay with that. Um, but let's delete the admin. Okay, reassign is not passed. So let's not proceed with that. Let's uh, re reassign uh, to my new admin user. Uh, reassign needs a value, reassign not passed. Huh? Did I spell it wrong? No. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, WP user, can you tell I haven't done this in a while? Uh, oh, user ID. Ah, I need to use ID. Okay, so it's WP reassign user and my ID was ID3. So let's do that. <clears throat> oh, it's equals three probably, of course. Sorry. Equals three. There we go. Okay, so it's removed that user. If I log in, now, now it's going to actually probably kick me out because I haven't... I'm not, yeah, I'm not logged in as that user. So let's test out my new user here. Um, let's copy that. And let's go there. Um, I don't need password to save this, but there I am. I'm logged in as my new user, Jay Bossinger. It has, uh, the new user has access to all the posts. Uh, I want to see what happens if I now run this. It actually probably will work. Uh, yeah, it does work because the cookie's been stored in the browser. So that still works. Um, I can still open my site. That all still works. Um, I wonder if I can change my site name. Let's see if that works. Uh, I wonder if it uses the user or not. It might not. I don't know. Let's see. Um, let's have a look. Ah, that didn't seem to work. So I'm guessing it uses the username because you'll notice here it has admin and password. I expected this to break, I'll be honest. Um, I don't actually expect this to work. Uh, this is kind of a very, I'm being, I'm being very edgy. I'm creating some edgy use cases. Um, but I like the fact, so this is the kind of thing that I could do before I push the site to production. I can quickly delete the initial admin user, create a proper, because whenever I push a site to production, I never leave a user with an admin and a password, with a username admin. I always create one under my own name and then give it a, a, a correct password. So that's the kind of thing I would do before I push it up. Um, but I can also do things like there's a, there's an option in, I actually want to see if this is going to work. There's an option in WPCLI where you can export your database. Um, and so I want to see if that's possible. I'm not sure what it's called. I think it's WPDB export or something like that. Yeah, here we go. Uh, no, not drop. Check clean CLI columns, great drop export. Here we go. Um, so it should be a case of export to a file. I just want a simple one. Um, okay, there's no simple examples here. So let's just say, let's just go, yeah, let's just go this one, WP export with add drop table. Um, <clears throat> so let me clear this out. And what I like to do when I do exports, I like to create a directory in my local environment called SQL. And so let's switch to that. Oh, that's probably not going to work. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm probably going to have to do that and then pass in the SQL directory and then give it a name because I think file is the name of the file. Yes, file. So that's going to have to go first. So let's do that. And then let's say uh, SQL and let's call it livestream.sql. I don't know if this is going to work going from SQL Lite, but let's see. Uh, boom. Da, da, da. Okay, failed to get a character set. Access denied for username at here. Okay, so that doesn't work, um, which is interesting. I understand why that doesn't work because it's a SQL Lite database, uh, but there is another way to do this, and I'll, I'll share that with you in a second. But any most other WPCLI commands, updating users, updating content, installing plugins and themes, all theoretically should work uh, from, from, the, from the terminal. While we're talking about this, let's talk about how to export the database. So in the uh, blog post, 
that was launched. No, not the blog post. I'm talking absolute nonsense. In the documentation, um, where is the link to the doc? Here we go. So I'll share the doc link with you in the chat as well. Um, there is a way that you can use the SQL Lite SQL SQL Lite uh, command line to export sites. Um, basically, let me just get down there. Sites overview, demo sites. Wait, link it on the side here. Um, oh no, wait. Let's just go down, 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 down. Here we go. So if you install uh, SQL Lite, which if you're on a Mac, which is currently the only version of Studio that works. And then you can just use Homebrew if you're using Homebrew or whatever your chosen way of installing things. And you can just run brew install SQLite. SQLite. Um, I do have SQLite on my machine. I have installed it. I installed it before today's session. So if I say which SQLite 3, there it is. And then with that information, you can just, where's the blog post? You can just run, um, where is it? Here we go. You can just run this. Uh, so I need to be inside of the root directory. So there we go. And I can paste that. So I can say WPCLite, sorry, SQLite, uh, WP content database dot HT dot SQLite. That's where the SQLite database is stored. It's the dump. And then we'll call it um, live stream dot SQL. Um, so that should work. Let's open that up. Um, <clears throat> there it is. And there is my, my transactions and my insert insus and all of that. Uh, my understanding is this should theoretically work um, if, I, if I import this into a WordPress uh, MySQL database. Uh, sorry, at least a MySQL database. But there is the data um, that we need if we need to export it. Um, you can also access the database. And there's two ways I want to see if we can do this. So I didn't include this in my list of things that I wanted to do today. But while we're here, why not? Let's go and have a look. So the first way I want to do is I want to see if I can do this inside of WordPress. There's a plugin that I've used in the past um, called uh, SQL Buddy. Let's do it from the command line. Why not? Uh, so let's say WP plugin install SQL Buddy, I think is what it's called. Uh, yes, there it is. Database management made easy. Let's see if this works. I don't know if it will. I have no idea. It's, it's probably going to be expecting a MySQL database with with usernames and passwords and all that kind of thing. So we'll see if it works. Um, I should have activated it in that command as well, but it's fine. I'll do it from here. Um, so there's SQL Buddy. Let's activate that. Um, and let's see if it works. Da -da 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 -da. I have a feeling it won't, but I'm keen to find out. Um, and tables. And hey, there we go. There are the tables. <laughs> uh, I'm actually really chuffed about that. Um, it just works. It picks up the, the SQL lights. So I'm guessing that SQL Buddy just uses whatever the WordPress install is using. And because the WordPress install is using the SQL Lite integration, it just works. And that's so cool. Um, so when I'm hosting locally, when I'm developing locally, I can use that plugin to access the tables. Um, so this is very, very cool. Um, I would mention, and I, I should mention this, the SQL Buddy plugin is developed by a company called Delicious Brains. I used to work at Delicious Brains before I joined Automatic, which is why I know about the plugin. Uh, the irony is that Delicious Brains is currently owned by the folks at WP Engine. Um, so the competitor for Studio can use the plugin of the competitor company inside of WordPress. Um, but that's really, really cool that it does just work. Uh, and that's one way to access your database inside of your WordPress install is by using something like uh, SQL Buddy. Um, the other way, and I'm pretty sure this is on the Studio uh, documentation, there is a app called SQLite Studio. Um, you can download it and install it. I do already have it on my machine as well. So there it is, SQLite Studio. I used this, I think, last week when we were doing, not last week, the week before when we were doing WP Now. So this works exactly the same way. Um, I will add the database and then I will need to go and find it. Now I'm wondering if this is going to work this way. Let's have a look. So let's go to Jonathan Bossinger. Let's go to Studio. Let's go to Livestream. And I'm pretty sure it was in WP Content and then database. Uh, and it doesn't seem to show the, the hidden files or not. Uh, let me just check this. WP Content database, yeah. Um, so this was one of the this was one of the issues that I discovered with SQLite Studio or SQLite Studio, is even though if I go into Studio here, um, 
against WP Content Database. Uh, oh wait, I don't have my hidden files showing. Uh, there it is. Okay, hidden files was command shift and period. I wonder if that's going to work in here now. Let's try that. Ah, there it is. So enable hidden files. First step. Um, and now I can select. Now it doesn't seem to be. There we go. Uh, it'll be. It's got all files. Why can't I? It doesn't seem to be allowing me to select that that type of file, um, which is slightly annoying. I'll be honest. But I did get a, I did get it to work last week by simply just um, by simply just getting the path to the file. Um, so that one. So. Da -da 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 -da. Um, so let's cancel this. And there's the file. And then it's dot ht dot no, no, database dot ht dot SQLite. There we go. And we'll just call it live stream. Uh, let's test the connection. That's all good. And there we go. There's our database ready to rock and roll. Um, Connect the database. There we go. There are all the tables. Let's make sure it's the right table. Uh, let's browse. Wait. Wait. There we go. Let's have a look at the data. And there's live stream and my user. Um, I'm not quite sure why SQLite Studio is having trouble accessing those files. Um, oh, I can drag and drop the file into the application. Ah, I didn't know that. Okay, let's try that. Let us disconnect this one and let us remove it yes and then let's try it this way around so i'm going to just drag this off screen here and i'm going to drag it on ah put it under the database list okay so that does work that's kind of cool so that's an easier way to do it uh, i'm not sure why it's not working with the other way i wonder if it's a naming thing i'm not sure um, but that is one way to do it as well personally um, I prefer the plugin because I've, I've got it inside of my WordPress site. I don't do a lot of database changes. Um, if I do, they're mostly because of custom tables that I'm working on. Um, but I like being able to have it in the browser. I spend most of my time in the browser, so having another app open for me um, just doesn't make sense. Disclaimer, once you're ready to push the site live, delete the SQL Buddy plugin. You don't want this plugin on production. It's going to give people access to your database, and that's just dangerous. So don't do it. <laughs> you heard it here first. Um, okay, so that was fun. Uh, that was a whole thing into data. We actually we jumped straight ahead to database management. So let's actually move that up in the list. Um, let's get on to debugging. Um, so let's close down some some tabs because I like to have loads of tabs open. Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. We don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. Um, debugging. Can I debug my code in 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 Studio? Uh, and the answer is yes to a certain degree. So let me show you what I mean. I can, uh, just as I can with any other WordPress install, I can go in and I can go into the WP config file and I can add my custom debug values. You can set these constants in WP CLI if you know about that. It's one way to do it. Uh, I tend to go the manual way. I tend to go inside my config file and then I set up my debugging here. So my chosen way to set up debugging is set debug to true debug display to false and deb debug log to true. Uh, and then let's see if this creates a debug log. So to get that to work, what I'm going to do is inside of my uh, copyright block plugin, I'm going to add um, some code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go add action in it uh, and I'm going to, um, sorry folks, my my main monitor just went off. That's why I'm looking weirdly at you. I'm trying to figure out why my monitor went off and switch it back on. Uh, so I'm going to um, create block. I'm just using the prefix of the current plugin and I'm going to register a rest Root, uh, because register rest root should happen on 
admin init not init. Um, so then I'm going to go function register rest root, uh, and then I'm going to go find some code to steal because I can't remember it offhand. So <clears throat> okay, let's get an example of registering a custom rest root. Um, there we go. Let's just grab this one. Oh wait, here we go. Uh, Oh, that's a bit complicated. Let's get a simpler one. Um, so we'll call it my plugin slug v2. Uh, we'll say test. Let's just format this code. Oh, something went wrong. Oh dear. Okay, never mind. Um, I know why that happened. It's because I've updated my PHP version recently. <laughs> And I haven't had a chance to fix it. Um, so we'll get method, we'll go callback. Um, uh, callback. Let's just find a better callback. This one. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I want to change a few things here. <clears throat> I'm going to call this live stream v1 test method get. I call it create block get test. Um, if you've never seen registering rest routes, don't stress. Don't expect you to know what's going on here, but I'll show you how this works in a sec. So there we go. And then we'll just need to register. Oh, actually, if we leave out that registration, it should throw an error as well. So that's actually cool. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create code that will trigger an error, which is what I want. So now if I refresh my WordPress site, I shouldn't see any problems there, but it should have logged an error to the debug log. So let's see if it's created a debug log file. Yes, there it is, debug.log. Yay, errors. <laughs> I've never been so happy to see errors before in my life. <laughs> Uh, yes, I'm weird that way. Um, and as you can see, it's telling me that register rest root was called incorrectly. Regist rest API roots must be registered on the rest API in action. Um, and that's why I did that on purpose. So, so that's lovely. It's registering the errors. So my debugging is working. So I can code along happily and I can see my debug log and I can see what er error, whatever errors happen. So let's fix this bug. Um, so it's got to be registered on the rest API init. Let us clear out the debug log and let us refresh the page. <clears throat> okay, that should have triggered errors if there were errors. And yeah, there were no errors. We're all good to go. Our code is happy and jamming. All right, so that's the standard WP debug options. They all just work out of the box as is standard default WordPress install. No need to configure or do anything special. Um, the other thing that I like to use is I like to use xdebug. Now, <laughs> I happen to know up front that xdebug does not work on Studio. Uh, so if you use xdebug and it's like a core part of your development process, I'm afraid Studio is not going to work for you. Um, and I have an open GitHub issue that I want to share with you to show you what the discussion is around that. Um, so the issue is again a WordPress Playground related issue. Um, and you'll see there, it would not be nice to have xdebug. So there is some work happening on that. Essentially what needs to happen is the playground uh, build needs to have xdebug installed on it so that xdebug can run. Um, and so it's something that is being worked on. It's a similar issue as the Windows uh, file permissions issue. So I'm hoping that it gets fixed soon um, and we can have it in studio. Uh, but it, unfortunately, currently it is not supported. However, there is a debugging tool called Ray. Now, Ray is actually developed by a Laravel focus company. Laravel is a PHP framework that some developers use to create custom applications. That having been said, Ray also has a WordPress plugin. So you should be able to install, ooh, plugins got updated. <laughs> That's cool. It's got a new look and feel. Um, wow, that must have just happened while we were busy doing this live stream. <laughs> so
So if you search for Ray in the plugin directory, you'll see Ray is there. Uh, it hasn't been tested in the last three versions. It doesn't need to, it does still work. And basically you can, once you've got the plugin installed, you can call this Ray command, install the Ray app, and then you can see the debugging happening on your, on your Ray app. So I think I've got Ray installed. Yes, I do have Ray installed. Um, I'm pretty sure that it works on all versions of, um, all versions of all operating systems. I'm pretty sure it's cross cross platform available. I don't think it, it doesn't. Um, there is, okay, let's uh, restart Ray for the new version. I haven't used it in a while. So I think it does work on Windows. Yeah, there we go. Desktop app for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Um, there is a trial mode that you can use. Trial mode basically logs the last 10 Ray calls. So you can have Ray calls all over the place, but it'll only be the last 10. So it's perfect if you're just gonna use Ray uh, in very simple environments. Um, what I don't know is whether Ray is just gonna work in Playground. Um, so let's find out. <laughs> So let's go to plugins uh, and let's go and add a new plugin. Um, let's install Ray. Search for Ray at least. Let's install it. <clears throat> um, and activate it. Okay, so Ray doesn't have any configurations or settings as far as I'm aware of. Uh, yeah, we should just theoretically be able to use Ray as is. So I'm going to open up Studio and I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to, in this code, I'm just going to, um, I'll do it inside another init hook. So let's create another hook. Um, let's just say init and let's say uh, create block test Ray, and then let's create that function. Um, <clears throat> and let's call Ray, and then let's say testing Ray. It doesn't have to be more complicated than that. Um, okay, so let's see if it comes up. Ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop. There has been a critical error on your website. <laughs> Let's check the debug log. Uh, call to undefined function ray curl init. Okay, so ray doesn't work because ray needs curl installed. Um, I seem to recall, I seem to recall in the studio blog post, there was something about curl. Um, And have a look. So there is the, the GitHub repository because it is open source. Um, so let me just check here. I think there was an issue logged with curl. Uh, yes, add support for recommended PHP modules, um, things like curl, XF, iMagic, blah, blah, blah. So there has been conversation around that. Um, so there's the xdebug one, there's the PHP feature parity. So there's definitely conversations happening around those things, but unfortunately that means that Ray is not possible to use either. So you are limited to using the built-in WordPress debugging options. Um, that's for me personally, one of the things that I don't like about Studio, when I am debugging a, a bug uh, in someone else's code, I like to have Xdebug installed. Um, so if you have an Xdebug enabled environment and you're thinking of switching to Studio, you're not gonna have Xdebug, unfortunately. Um, but so far, I want to be, you know, let's let's be perfectly honest here. So far, Xdebug is the only thing really that we haven't. Let's make it, where's strike through? Um, Xdebug doesn't work. Let's add, let's add um, the Windows, the Windows issue, um, Windows files. Uh, that's one thing that doesn't work that somebody has shared. Um, I hate the fact that strike through is hidden. Anyway, um, but so far everything else works. Um, what hasn't worked? No, everything else has worked so far. Um, cool. Not bad. Two out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight so far. Um, okay. 
I'm going to jiggle things around a little bit because I'm not going to spend too much time on push into production. Uh, we'll talk about it in a second. Let's try and enable multi-site. Let's see if that works. I'm quite keen to do that. Um, so enabling multi-site. If we have a look, I'll fix that site later. I'm going to create a new one site for it now. Anyway, if we have a look at WordPress multi-site, um, creating a WordPress multi-site with an existing site is essentially making sure that pretty permalinks works, editing WP config, and you're good to go. Um, so let's see if we can do that. So let us, I'm going to delete this site. Delete all the files. I don't need it anymore. And let's create a new multi-site. So we'll just call it multi-site. Let's call it studio multi-site. Um, I don't really care too much about the path, so that's fine. And let's create that site. Uh, let's see if I can have a sip of coffee before it's finished. I literally can't. I literally have to click create site and grab my coffee and I can have my sip of coffee before it finishes. Um, Okay, so now we've done that. Uh, we need to verify that pretty permalinks work. So let us open the site admin um, and let us, uh, where are we now? Let's go to settings. Let's go to uh, permalinks. Uh, let's just make it something simple like post name and save those changes. Let's check that that works by going to the hello world post uh, and viewing it. Uh, there we go. Hello world works. It has this index.php thing at the end, but hello world does work, so that's fine. Um, it's interesting. If I remember correctly, I think WP now didn't use the index.php, so I'm not sure why Studio does, but it's not a huge train, 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 train smash for me. Okay, so permalinks works. Uh, so let's go and define WP allow multi site to true. Um, and let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, so let's open it up in VS Code. I'm gonna close down live stream. Um, and let's go into the config. And let's enable multi-site. And then let's see if it should create a network setup. Ah, you cannot install a network of sites with a port number uh, set up. Okay, that is expected. Didn't know about that, but that kind of makes sense. Um, okay, so that's one more it doesn't, doesn't support. Um, I don't know how important that might be for folks. Um, I personally have not done a lot of multi-site development. Um, if I have... <clears throat> I have had to set up a version of the customer's site as a multi-site on my local environment. So that would be something that I would need to use something else. Um, so that's interesting. That might get back to my my desire to have uh, nicer, nicer uh, domain names. Um, so, so that's interesting. I'm not gonna log this because currently right now for me, this is not a requirement. Um, but if you belong to the studio team and you're watching this, maybe something to look into. I don't know. I don't know how important this is, um, but but unfortunately, it doesn't work. And that's okay. Uh, it doesn't have to work out of the box every day. Everything has to work. Um, all right. Then let's talk about pushing to production. Now, essentially, because you can export the database, either using SQL Live Studio or that command that I showed you, uh, or any one of those number of ways, you can just do it the old fashioned way. You can FTP your files up, you can FTP your, your MySQL data up, and you're good to go. Um, however, I'm sure many, many folks have different ways they want to be able to do these things. Um, one way that I like to push a site to production, especially if it's a brand new site, is I install one of the free like site duplicator packaging plugins. Um, and one that I've used quite a bit is a plugin called Duplicator. Um, so Duplicator is a plugin that allows you to create a package of your current site. Um, so I'm going to install it now and I'm going to see if it works. I'm not going to try all of these, these plugins like WP Staging and uh, WP Migrate DB and all of those. If you do use those, I would, I would like to ask you to try them out. 
Um, and then if they don't work, either feed them back to the studio team or somehow feed that data back. Um, because there are many different ways to push sites to production. I can't cover them all today, but I'm going to try a duplicator and see if that works. Um, okay, that's active. So let's go into, I think it's in tools. Uh, here we go, create your first package. So the thing comes up. So let's create a package. Let's see. Okay. Um, so this seems to not be working. I wonder if this is a case of duplicated and you need to support SQLite. That might be the case, um, but currently this one doesn't work. So I, if you want to try this out, test it out for yourself. For me, this isn't a huge train smash, I'll be honest, because I generally just go the old school route anyway. I export the MySQL files, or at least the MySQL database dump. I zip all the files up and then I push to production that way. So not a huge train smash for me, but worth testing if you're thinking about using Studio and you want to use any one of these types of plugins. Um, so this one, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say it can't do it. I'm going to say with, with some caveats, <laughs> uh, with some caveats. Um, cool. So that's kind of everything that I wanted to test out today. Um, and thank you for the ideas and the things that you came through and shared and, and, and issues that you've had with WP now. I wanted to show you before we wrap up some of the specifically wordpress.com related things that this can do. Um, I, I hope this works without sharing my password, but I'm basically going to log into my WordPress.com account now. Um, so it should just authorize because I should be logged in already, which is great. I am. Um, and once it's authorized, what I can do now is I can come on, open Studio app. There we go. I can share this site. Um, so if I click on the share tab, I can share a demo version of the site. Um, share host a clone of the local site, push updates to the demo at any time, and demo sites are deleted after seven days. So if I click add demo site, it basically takes my local version of the site and it pushes it up to a demo URL on the wordpress.com hosting environment. Um, it does take some time. It's got to obviously create the site, provision the environment, push the files up, push the data up. Um, but if you already if you already have a WordPress.com account, this is a great way to share these sites with your customers as you're building them out. Uh, it's a great way to create demo sites for theme developers or whatever the case may be. Um, they are deleted after seven days, so if you want to have it something that is alive all the time, you will need to keep updating it. Maybe you know once every five days, make a change and push it, or just push an update or whatever the case may be. Um, but uh, let's just let this finish and we'll and we'll see what this looks like. Um, Okay, still creating, it's almost there. Will I have time to have a sip of coffee before it finishes? Apparently I will. <laughs> um, okay, and then there's your link. So you can click on the link, you can share it with whoever. So there is the copy of my demo site, um, Studio Multisite, there it is. I wasn't able to obviously convert it, but there it is. Um, and then I can continue, if I make changes to the site, I can click update and it'll update the changes. When I'm done with the site, I can delete the site. But this is a very quick and cool way to quickly demo the site you're building for your client or whatever the case may be. Let them check it out. They can and should be able to log in with the same usernames and passwords that you've created. Um, I don't think I have the username and password that I created for my other user. Um, so that's going to be tricky. Um, I wonder. Let's do this. Let's go into the site. Uh, what was it called? It was called multi-site. Oh wait, this is multi-site. So I still have the original admin password. So that should work. Um, yes, so oh, that doesn't work. Uh, let's see what the password is for this chap. Settings. Okay, so it's admin and that's the password. I thought it was just password, but I guess it isn't. Um, Ah, there we go. So that that user works. So you can create a user for your for your customer, or just share the admin user with them if it's a testing environment. Uh, they can log in. It does say it will be deleted from seven days, um, but we should see our network set up. There it is. With now this should work because I'm not using um, um, a a port for the site, so I could set up the the multi site here and test it with the client that way. I wouldn't maybe do that, but that should work. Um, but my, my settings are all there. Any content that I've created will have been pushed up. Um, so that's one of the cool sort of, uh, let's call it pro features of this of this app, 
It does require a word a free it is a free WordPress.com account. But disclaimer, yes, I do work for Automatic. Automatic does own WordPress.com. It is it is the, the, the version of hosting that Automatic owns that is separate from the open source project. Um, but it's a great way to share demo sites with folks. Uh, and then when you're ready, you can delete it. Uh, and it will then delete the site and then it is cleared out and you never have to worry about it again. And that is it. That is all of the things that are available to you in Studio. Um, if you're looking for a very quick way to set up a local environment, to test out some things, to build a theme, to build a plugin, <clears throat> to do a very quick site build for a customer, if you don't already have one that you're, that you're tied to, I recommend checking it out. As I say, currently available on Mac, Windows version coming soon. Uh, there is a way to build it for Linux, and I think they're working on a Linux build as well. Um, but please do give it a, a tryout and, and share all your feedback. Um, as you may have noticed <clears throat> in the studio, so the studio um, GitHub uh, link is on the homepage of the studio blog, and you will see that folks have put all kinds of feature requests through. Whether they will happen or not is another story. That's up to the development team behind it. Um, but I like the fact that it is open source, which means I could, if I wanted to, fork Studio and add any features that I want. Um, what I've also suggested is maybe to create some kind of extensions, so a way that I could develop my own extensions. And then I could develop extensions that support what I specifically want for my setup of Studio. So that might be interesting. Um, so if you do have any feedback, feel free to share it with the team. I can't guarantee they will implement it because really it's up to the development team behind Studio to decide what they're going to add and what not. Like any open source project, it's 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 you know, you can't expect them to add what you want necessarily. But if you do find bugs in the current feature set, please do share it with them so that they can improve it. Um, you'll see there's the upload media one that uh, T. Ham Hamano shared with us earlier. Um, so, so do check that out and, and you know try it out. Give it a bash. It is currently going to become my new favorite way of setting up local sites for my work, for my live streams, for my workshops, for my, for my educational content, um, because it's just really, really quick. And I really, really like that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's Studio. My, my very fast, very rambly, <laughs> very excitable overview. Uh, I do encourage you to give that a check out and just have it as another tool in your tool belt. If you if you are happy with your current local environment, that's perfectly fine. Um, but give it a bash and see what you think. All right. That is me for today, folks. Um, I know we set aside an hour and a half for these things, but I sometimes don't always use the full hour and a half. Uh, so I'm going to call it a day. I'm probably not going to be around for another live stream uh, in, until at least two weeks from now. So probably around about the 14th of May in two weeks time will probably be my another live stream. Um, I have invited Ari to join me for that live stream so that we can discuss something that he was experiencing contributing to WordPress. I'm still waiting to hear back from him. So Ari, if you're watching, uh, get get in touch with me, man. I'd really love to have that conversation with you and invite you on, on the stream. Um, because there were some interesting comments that you that you raised that I'd love to dive into. Otherwise, for everybody else, uh, for those in the chat who are saying thank you, awesome talk, I appreciate your time. Thank you for for joining me. Uh, if I was so rambly and running fast, I do apologize. As I say, I do get excitable. Excitable. That's that's the wrong word. Excitable is the right word. Um, but I hope that you've enjoyed the session, uh, and I will see you in a roughly two weeks' time. Keep an eye keep an eye out. Good grief. Keep an eye out on. Uh, the Learn WordPress online workshops. I always try and post my my live streams the week before I'm going to have it. So sign up for, for updates there and you'll know when that's coming. Uh, but otherwise, enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy the rest of your, your, your day and your week and whatever's happening. Uh, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.